Tonight, I'm going to show you everything you need to make fluffernutter fudge. Stick around. Greetings, my confectionery compadres, and welcome to Randy Makes Candy, where I help you make tasty treats that people love to eat. I had a completely different episode planned, had the ingredients purchased, and was ready to roll when I was reminded that October 8th is National Fluffernutter Day. So I did some research, went back to the store for more ingredients, and here we are. For those of you unfamiliar, the classic recipe for a fluffernutter consists of white sandwich bread, marshmallow cream, and creamy peanut butter. We're going to switch things up a little bit by using a recipe I found on the Sugary Sweets website. There's a lot of good stuff there, so I'll put a link in the description. I did, however, run into a couple of things that I'll change next time I make these. I'll fill you in on those as we go along. As always, I'd love to hear about your results if you decide to make your own fluffernutter fudge, as well as suggestions for other recipes you'd like to see in future videos. And interestingly enough, at least to me, it was exactly 100 episodes ago that I shared my recipe for fluffernutter cups along with some fluffernutter history. If you'd like to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description as well. For this recipe, I used three cups of granulated sugar, three quarters of a cup of unsalted butter, a pinch of salt, one cup of heavy whipping cream, two cups of white chocolate, three quarters of a cup of peanut butter, one seven ounce jar of marshmallow cream, one cup of mini marshmallows, and one half cup of peanuts. I also used an eight by eight baking pan, some parchment, a large mixing bowl, a spatula, and a saucepan. This is the first part of the recipe I would do differently. It calls for an 8x8 pan, which is fine if you want super thick pieces. I prefer mine about half this size, so I'd recommend using a 9x13, unless you want super thick fudge. <laughs> okay, let's make some candy. Line the baking pan with parchment paper and set it aside. Melt the white chocolate, then add it to the mixing bowl, along with the peanut butter and marshmallow cream. Give that a bit of a mix and set it aside. In a large saucepan over medium heat, add the sugar, butter, salt, and heavy cream and mix until it's combined, then stir occasionally. Here's the second thing I'd change. The recipe says to let the mixture come to a rolling boil, then stir for four minutes. I did that, and right before the four minutes was up, I took a reading with my infrared thermometer and got a reading of 248 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a great temperature for caramels, but it's a bit too high for fudge. As a result, the fudge came out a little drier than I care for. Next time, I'd ditch the timer and boil until my thermometer got up to about 238 degrees Fahrenheit. Carefully pour the mixture into the large mixing bowl with the other ingredients. Mix until it's fully combined. Fold in the marshmallows and peanuts. Pour the fudge into the lined pan and let it rest on the counter for about 15 minutes. Transfer the fudge to the refrigerator and leave it for at least three hours until it's set. Remove the fudge from the pan and cut it into whatever size pieces you'd like. And that's it.
If you're enjoying this video and would like to become a true compadre, click the subscribe button and turn on notifications for the channel. I'd love for you to be a regular visitor to the Candy Kitchen. Slanchiva! Okay, like I said, it's a little on the dry side. Not unpleasantly so. It's kind of like the old-fashioned fudge that's kind of dry and crumbly, but as you chew it, it melts in your mouth. It's acceptable, but just not as creamy as I would have wished. But the flavor, oh my goodness. It's very sweet, as you might imagine. In fact, it's a little too sweet for Mrs. Randy Makes Candy. She says it tastes kind of like the old Abba Zabba candy bar, for those of you who remember that one. The peanut butter and marshmallow flavors are both there in abundance, but they really do work together to make a treat that I find absolutely delightful. If you're looking for a new way to celebrate National Fluffernutter Day, you really ought to try these. If you'd like to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description. Man, I was so close. And interesting a lot. I'll leave a link to that in the description. It's a little... Click the subscribe. No, don't do that.